have to show mine off, right? There you go, buddy. Thank you for the bits, Ariella. I really appreciate it. Look at that bit just absolutely losing its mind on the uh, bouncing back and forth. My god. Hello. Hey, bud. Yeah. Oh, there you go. He's got such a happy face. Oh, carrot landing high. Oh, all right. Yeah, let's uh, let's take a look at something real quick. ESP32, Bluetooth transceiver module, antenna not included, surface mount. That's fine. You can... Oh, I mean, nothing like a good old fans... Good old fashioned 62-page data sheet. Gotta love a 62-page data sheet. Um, honestly, Ariella, this is... This is the stream. That's, that's all it is. Um, honestly, I was... Legitimately, the only reason why I opened that project was because I haven't worked on anything technical in a while, and I went, "That's something I have. That's something I could push forward." Uh, whereas this is new and interesting, and I would happily, um, happily turn around to doing this. So let's see. This is an ultra po low power single core CPU. Oh, it's actually got a, its own little thing. Fancy. Catholic themed keyboard. Oh my lord, that's ridiculous. <laughs> so it's a microcontroller based solution. So this is a whole other thing. That's a little bit more than what I want. Um, I don't want an, uh, an actual microcontroller in itself. I want a Bluetooth module. Something I can actually solder myself. The Belly 65. <laughs> Razor, welcome in. How's it going? Uh, we are currently looking. Uh, Ariella came in and talked about this guy here. And was uh, interested in whether or not it'd be possible. Because we were working on a different PCB design. Was questioning whether or not this is something that I could actually do. Because it's been... Basically, the original creators tried to commercialize it, and it, I would guess that they probably got stuck in uh, the expensive nonsense of commercializing a uh, product. Uh, it's a super cute design. Uh, this is not mine, but uh, it looks like we're going to be doing something similar. Um, it looks like we're going to be doing something of a similar overall shape and or size and or concept in general. Um, but this one, they talked about doing it via Bluetooth. So I'm just quickly looking at Bluetooth chips and seeing what that actually looks like. Because... Obviously, there's a whole version of this where uh, I could make my own my own situation. Let's see. That's a, that's a whole thing. So I've seen the Seed Studio microcontroller. That's interesting. I'm not. Sh I'm not certain, Ariella. I'm really not. I. I don't know. Um. 
Let's find out. Technical limitation, but not insurmountable. Kyung K is built onto on top of hardware extraction layers. Yep. Um, none of these support any chips with Bluetooth. There's currently an ev eventual plan for Kyung K to work on top of uh, some Bluetooth hardware. Um, can work with Bluetooth today, but it's kind of garbage, so nobody bothers, um, which is bad because it's bad for latency and power. Um, Apparently also has licensing issues with common Bluetooth drivers. ZMK is the answer for Bluetooth. What's ZMK? Open source keyboard firmware. Um, design for the future, including wireless support. Yeah, so that's that's the that's the question raiser is we're in we're in information gathering phase right now for engineering requirements. Um, so RF applications. Uh, your radio frequency stuff like Bluetooth, like Wi-Fi, or other wireless communication methods tend to work at high frequencies. And high frequencies tend to cause all sorts of really weird, odd behaviors in circuits. Uh, to the point that even like well-practiced, experienced people in electronics tend to refer to uh, RF stuff as more uh, black magic than uh, actual science because of how particular and how fiddly and weird and how much of it is just like intuition and understanding of it and how much of it is just like superstition <laughs> um first gen full body trackers they got the spacing wrong yeah you gotta be like i mean you can end up you end up with that similar problem with uh both analog like if you have like mixed analog and digital signals on a board in general uh but the higher frequency you go the more problematic things become and then you have to worry about differential trace lengths so if you have um like an rx and tx lines uh especially at high frequencies they need to basically be the exact same length otherwise they're going to have slightly different resistances which will cause slightly different delays and at high frequencies even the tiniest amount of delay can cause really big impacts and then of course uh high frequency sounds ten uh, high frequency signals tend to like being induced onto other pieces or other pieces like inducing onto high frequency tracks and because of the nature of high frequency, small shifts in the overall signal can cause massive differences in your total signal. So it is a very interesting problem. Um, I've never heard of ZMK. Let's see. Is... Differentiated by wireless, wireless, ZMK instead of blue, RGB underglow, but not individually programmable keycap. Uh, they're putting money into charging. All these things should be extremely. Uh... IMU sensors are a lot of fun to play with. Um, I did a. Um, I did a board for my. This guy here. Uh, this board here is one that was meant for uh, my capstone project. So basically, it connects a whole bunch of BLDC motors to all of my... Uh, it's my BLDC powers and then the appropriate channel outputs for all the PWM. A uh, TNC microcontroller, a couple of voltage regulators, and uh, 
Then I've got my uh, IMU, the MPU 6050 in that particular uh, application. And then my inputs from my uh, RC controller and a little JSTXH header that I could connect to directly, uh, which bypasses all of these inputs and allows me to just have a wired hookup connect a wired control instead of a wireless control. So when we're working in the wind tunnel, instead of dealing with wireless, we can just plug into the wired header and bypass all the wireless features. Uh, Cause this is basically meant to be a uh, control board for an RC aircraft, basically. Um, uh, keyed Twitch, I have seen, uh, honestly, every time I do a keyboard stream, I have random people show up uh and it's a really interesting com community um i'm far more interested in the design rather than manufacture like i built a dactyl manuform and i've got another like i built some i've hand hand built some keyboards and stuff like that but yeah so this was my my capstone project pcb and basically it's meant to be a six axis um self-correcting quadcopter style aircraft using magnus effect which was a whole whole other thing <laughs> um there was videos in my scenes and i don't think they're still in here anymore no no they aren't but that's okay i haven't spent a lot of time hanging out on twitch in general for the last little while um Yeah, so I, I mean, I'm never a big fan of wireless devices when I have the option for wired, but I also understand the complete mess that can become uh, a wired situation. So I'm not opposed to looking into it, but if I understand correctly, um, there, there, that's actually one thing I have noticed, uh, Ariella. There was a, uh, uh, is yeah a lot of uh a lot of women and a lot of um you know alphabet gang representation which i thought was really quite nice um not something that i would have expected people to bond over uh but it's it's always weird when things are coming together um yeah this this uh this little guy here is not terribly complicated all said and done but uh, there's a couple of things I've definitely done bad on on this uh, on this board, but that's okay. The big, the big, one of the biggest troubles with this was the amount of power I had to deal with, um, and because I had to deal with potentially up to 60 amps uh, instantaneous current, uh, which was what I had to design for, uh, because of the. Uh, the nature of how the BLDC motors could go. If all the motors came on full power, then I'd be looking at a complete power of draw 60 amps at 18 some volts, uh, which is obviously a lot, um, a lot, a lot. And uh, pretty much all the IPC guidelines for PCB trace thickness end at about 35 amps. So we basically had to extrapolate out from there and then you're also dealing with, um, you know, stuff like, uh, you know, super big traces. But then you're also going, how do I get some kind of thermal isolation so I can actually solder to the darn thing without reducing my total ability to deal with the whole situation? And uh, it was a whole, it was a whole process because uh, basically the batteries would connect here and then. So what it ultimately became was it was a potential 60 amp and then 50, 40, 30, 20, and then 10 because each motor, so it wasn't 60 amps to the end. It was 60 amps to here, but we kept it consistent all the way along. And yeah, some really interesting uh, considerations, but there's some, this was a, one of the first PCBs I ever designed and I can see some stuff that I don't like about it. So like, for instance, I've got a little chunk of dead copper here uh it's not technically dead copper because 
there's this through hole and that through hole which do connect up to the top plate which reconnects the ground but i should have had i should have perforated this with vias to help reduce the uh the overall situation um distinct lack of toe beans yeah there's there's uh not a lack of moth though no lack of moth <laughs> Um, yeah, so basically we'd be talking, we'd be looking at, um, some kind of PCB design. Uh, I would be more like, as it currently stands, my own knowledge of development aside, because I don't currently know how to design for wireless. Um, but ignoring that because anything can be learned. That's, you know. I don't know how to do many things that I've managed to do. Um, ignoring the fact that I don't know how to do it, I would still be more inclined to go for a wired version just simply because um, from my personal experience and my understanding is keyboards tend to be a lot more... Um, that great carrot, thanks for that. <laughs> Very accurate quote, to be fair. <laughs> um... Past me is generally smarter than current me. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that, that happens. <laughs> but I'd be more inclined to go wired just because I do know that uh, it is a lot more reliable. And uh, Opti mechanical keys. I'm not super familiar with those. Um, let's try out some fiber, fiber optic keyboard. I mean, hey, buddy.
Yep. That's, uh, that's a thing. Those are really pretty. Those are really, really quite pretty. So they, they're telling me this should be on. I've never used this particular. <laughs> okay, looks embedded ish. Interesting. I wonder if that I don't, I can't imagine that there's any requirement to actually use Chibi OS instead of um and then there's also the opportunity to work <laughs> Oh god I that is a fantastic land and a spot a great spot for that emote Um think we'll be looking at probably twenty five thirty dollars for raw materials would be the guess I would have immediately I I thought I had basically all ads turned off it might have uh, did it ignore me again I, I might have refreshed my settings again. Pi Cluster is a cool project, for sure. Hmm. And then, of course, the RP2040 is... Which I've never actually developed for, but... Oh, jeez. It's only a dollar. That's silly. Is this even the same part? Well, apparently. Huh. Never done development for the RP2040, but it's interesting. And it is a tenth of the price of the STM32 chip that I'm looking at. Not that I couldn't use a cheaper STM board, or STM chip, rather. So I'm just quickly looking at pricing. Four two. What's this guy? Ooh, the much fewer chip points, but that's probably fine. Although this did say fo four two. I doubt that that one's actually going to work. Although fo x two that should be in that family. But they did suggest 64 kilobytes plus for ARM. And this one is a 32 kilobyte flash. Hmm. So at $3, that's a more interesting uh, Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm at this exact moment. I'm happy to just kind of explore the project overall. Um, this is, a, and so yeah, this is one of the weird things. Is again, like, that's part of why I did the, 
uh, the macro pad PCB that I showed earlier, which is I had a number of people asking me whether or not I could build a macro pad thing, which I was doing with a 3D print and a point-to-point uh, -point wiring. And it basically worked out that for it to be worth my time and materials and everything like that, it was going to be something stupid, like $90, because of the point to fight wiring and all the labor that went into the 3D print, etc., etc., etc. So I did the PCB to be able to bring it down substantially, uh, because labor is just an absolutely brutal cost of custom, custom components. Uh, design work is something that I wouldn't feel super comfortable charging for at this exact moment, mostly because there's going to be a massive amount of learning and education in there, and it'd probably be stream content more than anything billable, just because, like, if I already knew this specific piece, fair enough, you know, um, but it would be realistically probably, I don't know, 10, 15 hours of labor for development optimistically assuming i could figure out exactly what was going on uh probably more than that realistically and then you're also looking at materials and development and uh, manufacturing troubleshooting etc 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 yeah not not something that uh i would feel comfortable charging for but uh i would happily take a look at that now there is the one portion that i'm con uh I am mindful of which is that these guys I mean they haven't made it they've talked about it so I don't know where that would stand as far as like you know copyright etc as long i mean as long as i'm not like sitting here copying their pcb and stuff like that i think it'd be fine because i mean a macro pad the shape of a paw is not exactly a super crazy unique idea um yeah Yeah, I, I would tend to agree with you, Ariella. Um, that would be my my assumption as well. Um, I also don't know what the process for getting a custom profile cut. I'm just going to not save. Discard changes. Let me start a new project. Okay, let's not... Uh... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 Absolutely, Ariella. Um, reach out to me on Discord, uh, and we can, we can discuss things as we go and what things look like and other engineering requirements. Um, thanks for stopping in and thanks for such an interesting uh interesting challenge i'm just going to close most of those links because we don't need to have most of them open um EXF
I was quickly seeing what this would look like if I were to grab a Hello, big, wide, crazy. That's huge. But if I did this on edge cuts, did it exactly okay fair enough that actually did it perfectly that did exactly what I thought it should um, one meter. there we go um, if I actually flip this so I just wanted to quickly see what the process for importing a custom board shape was. And yeah, just bring it in as a DXF and ta-da, you have your, your shape. So that would be basically a matter of bringing this into something like Inkscape or similar, creating a general outline, and then uh, scaling it appropriately and then you would have your board cut because that to me seems like the the prudent place to start before the layout which would be figuring out where all the uh board edge is and then going from there forward um yeah i think i've got an escape i do yay One moment while I where are you? There's the
I mean, there's also the version where I just manually go around this thing because it doesn't make a massive difference, but I feel like there's a version. I also just grabbed the first. There's probably a pot outline that I could grab, which is all one 